The most common question that I get asked about extended release oxalic acid strips is do they work? So I figured the best way to answer that question would be to shoot out and test some of my hives that I put strips into this spring. It's the middle of November now here in southern New Zealand. Before I get into doing the test and looking at the result, here's a quick recap of what these strips are all about. These strips are then used to carry oxalic acid, which is wood bleach and which destroys mites. They just straddle, this is part of the reason why they're called staples, is that they look like a staple and they just straddle a brood frame. Now I want to put four in and I want to put them on every second frame. Once I put these strips in, they just stay there. They stay there until the bees have eaten them and destroyed them and tossed any residue out the front door. And that could be some time. It depends on the bees, it depends on the hive, and it depends on the temperature and the time of year and so on. But I've had strips that have stayed in my hives for uh, three months. And that's giving an ongoing treatment. You have a very, very low level of mites. If you want to know more, I'll leave a link to episode 31 at the end of this video and that explains it far more fully. What I do when I'm testing is I take some random sample tests. I use an alcohol wash but when I say alcohol I don't use pure alcohol I actually use methylated spirits diluted 50-50 with water. I've done side-by-side -side tests with that against pure alcohol and against detergent wash and I get the same results on the same hive on the same day. So I'm confident that this method works just fine. When I do a test I start by going into the middle of the hive and looking for the brood. Then I check to make sure I haven't got a queen before I actually take the bees from the brood frame. I'm going to the brood because that's where the, the mites are that's the highest concentration of them and the way that I'm collecting the mites off the frame is just based on the advice of the makers of that particular test apparatus. This apiary has not been treated with anything except extended release oxalic acid strips for two and a half years. take the bees, put them into the alcohol and put the lid on, then I'll put the frame back and put the hive back together again because it's going to be a wee while before I've finished doing this test. The key I've found from my experience and the advice from other beekeepers is to ensure that you give the, the test pot lots and lots of agitation. So I just I'll just uh, quickly smoke these bees down, put the lid back on, there's a few bees on the bottom of the lid so I'll give it a bit of a shake and poke the, put the lid back on and then I can get to actually doing the agitation to shake the mites off the bees. Now you want to do this but really really well. I've put it into fast forward here a little bit because uh, it's nothing more boring than you standing there or sitting wherever you are watching your computer, watching me shake a pot for two minutes solid. Uh, but that's what I do. Two minutes, but it's not actually solid. I give it a good shake and then I put it to one side. Now, I've just gone off and grabbed a honey super. When I do my mic tests, I integrate it into the other tasks that I have in the apiary. I very rarely go to an apiary just to do mic tests. So in this case, I'm putting honey supers onto these hives and so I'm doing the mite test while I'm in the hive putting the honey super on. So I've, given, I've now given that container two shakes and then put it aside to sit. I put, do my other tasks in this case, as I said, put the honey super on and then I'll get back and do even more shaking. I don't want to leave any mites on the bees. The test, I'm only kidding myself if I don't do the shaking properly. 
I understand that uh, Randy Oliver, who does thousands and thousands of these tests a year, has actually made himself a little machine. In fact, I think he's up to about version six of it that agitates the, the container automatically. So I just showed you there how many bees were in the sample. I filled it up to the line inside the pot, inside the test pot, that says this is 300 bees. It's not exactly 300, but it's pretty close. And then I pull out any dead bees that made their way into the pot. It shouldn't be any, but I was a bit sloppy because I had one eye on the camera. And now I'm just trying to put that pot in a position where you can see the mites. And uh, right here, you'll see hard to, to spot on this camera, but there are two mites in this sample. Now, two mites is a low test. Two mites for 300 bees. That's, uh, that's 0.66% or 0.66 of a mite per 100 bees. Now something I do that I'm not sure if other beekeepers do this or not, I don't throw that alcohol away after one test. I carry a, a very fine sieve with me that the mites won't pass through and I pour the alcohol back down into the lid, make sure there are no mites in the bottom of the pot because if I, if I leave any mites in there then they'll get counted in the next test and then pour the alcohol back in. And I'll keep reusing that alcohol until it gets too murky to be able to do it, to see clearly whether or not there are mites in there. I might get five or six or seven tests. Plus you lose a little bit of alcohol every time you do a test. When you throw the bees out, some alcohol goes with it. So I keep topping it back up again and that does mean that I can get quite a lot of tests before I have to throw the whole lot out and start again. All right, so let's talk about that result. What I didn't video was the second test that I did in that apiary. There are about 20 hives in that apiary, so I've tested two. The second test actually came out with only one mite. One mite per 300 bees, so 0.33. Those levels of mites are acceptable to me. I'm tre I've treated, and in fact my treatments, because, it's a, because they're extended release strips, are still in the hives. But I'm satisfied that that's a level that I'm comfortable with. So to get right back to the question that was posed at the start of this video, does extended release oxalic acid treatment work? And the answer is yes, it works for me. Thanks for watching.